2013 brings a new challenge for the Swans and their forward line after they lost their gun forward, Ash Hansen. I think the biggest thing that we've missed since Ash Hansen's gone out of our front half is just that execution. If he had eight shots on goal, he kicked seven. And that ability to just kick goals under pressure uh, is just so important and that's what we need to get right over the next few weeks. Well, our structure hasn't really changed um, a great deal in terms of the way we set up, but I mean having a guy kick 65 goals in 12 games, I mean you can't really replace that. But I suppose the positive side of thing was Ash only played 12 games, so we sort of feel if we can get the same amount of goals over someone over over 20 games is going to have the same type of impact. I mean, you're not going to have someone of his quality there, and um, I mean, and that's just, I mean, that's just reality. Um, but in terms of actual structure, it's changed a bit. It's changed slightly, and um, and we sort of, you know, things are working okay at the minute. But that wasn't the case early on in the season. After five games, they were two and three, and sitting outside the top four. And when you go in a quarter time and you're one goal five and you've missed four easy set shots and one from 20 out running into an open goal, it is demoralising. Uh, and you can, it's really hard to put scoreboard pressure on an opposition when you're getting a lot of ball forward but you just can't execute. Swan's inaccuracy has cost them dearly. Each time they finish the game with more behinds than goals, they lose. It certainly is a confidence thing and uh, look, going to this week, it's certainly something we don't think about because we can certainly turn it around pretty quickly. It certainly can go the other way. Smith and Hildebrand. Hildebrand prevails. Got it to Hams. Hams was taken high. I think the siren's gone. The siren has gone. Swan Districts, in the best game you'll see this year, have found a way to win. Oh, it was great. Look, we were done and dusted probably, oh, probably five or six times. But uh, to their credit, the boys kept coming and... We've been finding it so hard to score goals over the last three weeks and, um, and and also today we had massive areas where we dominated the game and had momentum and just couldn't put them under the scoreboard pressure and uh, luckily in those last sort of three or four minutes when we needed three or four quick ones we were able to manufacture it. Mark set now. Tim Gapen was the Swans leading goal kicker from 2009 to 2011. He also hasn't missed a game since beginning his WAFL career in 2008. And, uh, Tim Gopin makes no mistake about that. He's in rare form at the moment, Gopin. He's been a terrific contributor for Swan District's up forward for a number of years now. Now with Ash Hansen gone, Gapin is back as a key forward and enjoying the challenge. Uh, Tim Gopin, well often he's the lead up man, but this time he was crumbing. Read the ball beautifully at the back and uh, just uh, had uh, it was a, a piece of cake for a player of his skill. I don't sort of set myself a certain target of goals a game, absolutely not. Um, but I mean, we feel as, as a forward group that if we can sort of have seven or eight different goal kickers and, and also through the midfield, it doesn't rely on, you know, on someone like myself or a Tony Knight or Nathan Blakely. And I was actually speaking to a couple of guys before, is it, is it guys like myself and Ash, for example, aren't going to be around forever. So it's a great opportunity while we've got these experienced guys at the club to learn off, you know, to, to teach the younger guys and they can learn off us and hopefully develop them into, in, into key forwards. Strong lead from Gapen has to roll forward after taking the mark. You want to play on quickly. Chips inside the attack in 50. It was perfect for not to mark. Well, I guess Ash always, you know, tended to get the best defender um, each week, which was, which was great for me. Um, but obviously now um, I, I tend to get that defender. But yeah, absolutely right. So, I mean, there's, there's been a couple of occasions where I've tried to get higher up the ground and and leave our guys you know, isolated inside forward 50. And if we can do that and, and we're kicking a winning score, well, that's the aim of the game to get the job done, I guess. So, um, yeah, but it's a bit of a different role for me, but it's certainly one I enjoy. Gapen on his own strolls in and gets one back. Gapen also took over from Hanson's duties as forward coach. So I basically look after the guys um, during the week. Um, and then we, and we've got Trent Cooper who helps out on game day. So I'm basically, basically focus on trying to help the boys during the week. Just means I, I stay at selection tonight and have more involvement, but I, I sort of feel it's always great to have a, a player in selection as well because you always uh, get a great player's perspective of who, who the guys want or don't want or, or, or who we should play on this type of guy um, and things like that. So um, the role sort of hasn't changed. I mean, the boys give me a bit of stick and still can't believe I'm coaching and stuff like that, but, but no, no it, it's been enjoyable.
Tim's great in that area. Um, he's one of our best forwards and one of our best goal kickers, and he's been able to help the young kids out really, really well. And he's uh, over the last couple of weeks, he probably hasn't been as strong as what he'd like to be. But you know, he'll keep coming. His ability to keep running in a game of footy and his massive endurance will, certainly opens up a lot of space. And if he continues to do that, then Tony Knott and Nathan Blakely and the guys a little bit deeper up the ground will certainly start to score a lot of goals. I'm, I'm quite lucky because probably out of all the guys that are in the coaching, not, not many of them played forward, so they sort of don't really have a, a leg to stand on when they're trying to talk. I mean, Greg played his whole career down back and, and obviously did it very well. Pace is just so important, uh, and we've got that. Enter Kirk Eugle. The former Kerry Park and Collingwood player remains in the black and white and could be the jetpack Swans need to rise up the ladder. It's the Eugle again! To Eugle again who's kicked his fifth! We, we know what he can do and he's produced it on a number of occasions where he's kicked bags and if we can just get a little bit more consistency out of him and, the, um, and he's a little bit more consistent with his goal kicking then he's going to have his 30 to 40 goal year as a small forward that's tough to do. Well, we were crying out for someone like Kirk Eugle last year, he's probably the element that we really needed to, obviously we got beaten out here um, in, in the prelim and I reckon had someone like him throughout the year, you know, to, to, to sort of mop up the ball, um, would have been huge. Throws it onto his boot, it was touched as the siren goes, East Fremantle through to the 2012 Grand Final. He's had a super game, super games for us this year and um, hopefully he can continue and, and it, it, that really takes the pressure off. Um, our key forwards. Look, someone with that raw talent and, and knowledge of where to go at the right times, I can't teach that because I wasn't a good enough player to actually tell Kirk Eagle where to run to. So, look, that's that's just fact. So, look, we set Kirk up with really clear guidelines, which is, yeah, take your, take your talents with the footy as much as you can, and then when they've got it, try and put them on the ground as much as you possibly can as well. So it's pretty basic in the front halves of any team these days. Put on pressure and try to make the most of your opportunities. Good mark again from Eugel. Eugel prefers the half-forward position, but he's happy to be put anywhere, so long as he can get his hands on the footy. He's got his second. Six unanswered goals now for Swan Districts. He says to me nearly every game, just if you get the chance, just do what you want. Go find the footy, but make sure you get back to the forward and you know put pressure on if the ball comes out. It's good because obviously I get to obviously do what I want, but also stick to the game plan and my role in the team. This season, the Swans have maintained their structures throughout all their playing levels. We'll basically do a lot of stuff with the, the reserves have exactly the same structure as us, same, same kick-ins, this type of stuff. They, they go through exactly the same process as the senior boys do, so um, it's a bit of a cliche, but if they're ready to roll and come straight into the seniors, um, I mean, we, we found well, looking at AFL clubs and the great clubs like Geelong and Collingwood and stuff, and even, I mean, Claremont um, are a great example of that, of, sort of had five or six to ten players out and their reserves players can come in straight away and do a job and that's sort of one thing that we want, especially our forwards, that if they come out there they know exactly what role they play each week regardless of whether it's at 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock. So it's one thing we've tried to implement and, um, and, and still working on.